how many have heard people say, I'm not gonna get my CCF, that doesn't mean anything? Who's, nobody's heard that? You're kinda old school, you've heard that. CCF doesn't mean anything. You wanna know why CCF doesn't mean anything? It's a nonsensical military acronym that means nothing to no one. But the CCAF is an associate's degree. Just like all these other schools out here offering associate's degrees, and we're regionally accredited, so it's like a little bit better than like just a regular one, but we are a regionally accredited school that is wholly contained in the Air Force. So saying CCAF is only saying the name of the school, Community College of the Air Force, but you're really earning an Associates in Applied Science in your AFSC. So what's your AFSC? Um, 3051. So that's personnel, right? I don't really know, I don't have them memorized. Uh, but knowledge management, so when you earn your CCAF, you're earning an Associates in Applied Science and Knowledge Management from the Community College of the Air Force. So when someone says the CCF doesn't mean anything, say it's an Associates degree like all other Associates degrees. And it's not, an, it's not an end degree, it's not a terminal degree, but it's a degree, and when you go and apply for jobs in the civilian world, or you want to make rank, it is going to be that stepping stone that you need. So um, now, how far are you along? You just probably need one or two general educations, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Education yeah. So most of your CCAF credits, there's 64 credits, a lot of them are already achieved through going to tech school and through job training. And it all depends on your AFSC, so some tech schools are longer than others, so some earn more credit than others. Your five level gets the same amount of credits for everyone, you get eight credits for that. You get five credits for seven levels, so if you wait a little while longer, you get after your seven level, you get a little more credit. And so that takes care of most of the technical credits that you need for your degree. Knowledge management, was, did you have a really short tech school? Very short. Very short. So you guys are going to have to work just a little bit harder. And so that, and there's tons of options. Don't think, oh gosh, okay, well I've got to work harder. But you're going to have to work harder on a bachelor's. And if you work towards a bachelor's, a lot of those credits apply towards your CCAF anyway. So a lot of people start on a bachelor's and then just transfer it over. So we'll kind of, I'll, and I can talk to everybody separately because I have a table out there. I can pull up your progress reports and I can get, tell everybody exactly what they need. So that's your technical. Then you need some program electives. And program electives are like the wonderful dumping ground of everything that was over from all the other areas. So tech schools that were very long, you get program electives for that. If you went to school and you earned some credits from that, like a science class or anything, that would go in there. If you have excess of LMMS, which is Leadership Management Military Science, which I'm gonna bet you have a bunch of that, don't you? ALS, NCOA, Senior NCOA, yeah, they all go in there. <laughs> so. That's another area that a lot of people already have a lot of the credit complete. LMMS will come with um, ALS. You get nine credits for ALS, but you can totally do it ahead of time. It's a, it's a lot of people come do it ahead of time for BTZ, so and I can tell you guys what credits you need for that. And then there's five general education credits, and those five credits are ones that float between the CCAF and um, any civilian degrees. All degrees are gonna end up with an English class, because they want to teach you how to write. All degrees are going to have a math class because they want to know that you can think uh, um, analytically. Yeah, analytically. Um, they have a public speaking course that you have to take, and that's a little specific to CCAF because they just want to know, even though you take ALS and you take all these other things, it's just um, a different skill set that you learn, and so you have to have that class. And then you have to have a social science and a humanities, and those are more just for expanding um, how, how you think. You ex get exposed to different subjects, and so those five are the mix that they've decided that really match on the civilian side. So if you already have previous credits, you transfer all that over, and so that'll whittle down what you need. Um, and then if you took APs in high school, that'll whittle down what you need. And then they have tests for credit. So, oh, by the way, this, and it lives at the education office. You can get it from me via email. This is for transferring previous college credit. If you took a couple credits, as long as you got a C or better, you can send it to CCAF, okay? And you go back to your original school to get this. Then we'll talk test for credit, and I kind of cruise through this because, again, it's kind of specific depending on how many you need. Um, the general educations are all the same. And then keep in mind the names of these tests very similarly match classes. So what you can do is you can take this list and you can kind of go out there and go, do you have a composition class? And they'll get you in a composition class. So these were, will be tests for credit, and then you can just take classes to take, to take care of anything you don't want to test, test for credit. So how many took ACTs or SATs in high school? 
these are the young ones. <laughs> you should have sat on the young side. <laughs> so these are easier. So if you were one of those people that was terrified by standardized tests, especially if you're young, you just came out of school and you're like, God, all they do is standardized test us. This is easier because what the test for credits do is they take the skills that as a functioning working adult that you have and someone who graduated high school has and they give you a test and then they give you college credit for that. And keep in mind, you can use these for civilian degrees. You just have to ask your school which ones they will take before you take the test. So for the five general educations, four of them, really three, depending on how mathy you are, three of them you probably, as a functioning working adult, already have the skills to pass. You just have to do a little bit of studying. And all that material is at the library. Math, sometimes people aren't very mathy. Sometimes that's one you might have to take in a class. But what I will say is if you, um, if you were mathy in high school, usually what you have to do is just gain that muscle back. So just practicing doing math problems again will kind of get that skill back. And then the last one is social science. And social science is different in the fact that unless you've had a class in one of the subjects, they are a little more difficult to pass through self-study, but you can do it. But because you're learning something from scratch, you have to get an additional resource. So when you go into the library, they have study guides for all of these tests. And what you do is, if it's something you already know, like analyzing and interpreting literature, you're reading pieces and you're answering questions. And literary terms you got over and over and over again in high school, in elementary school, so it's all very familiar. So when you start reading it, you'll pick it up. So for the three that I said, that's all you're gonna do. You're gonna get the study guide, you're gonna take a couple practice tests, you'll be prepared for the test, you go in and you take it. For math, maybe you have to study a little more, do a lot of practice problems, get that math muscle working again. And then for social science, how many of you have been in the library? Know where the video games are? Can you make a hard right from the video games? And then they have all the shelves with all the books. And honestly, you could teach yourself all of this stuff out of books. Um, but for social science specifically, they have psychology books, they have history books, and you'll have to just teach yourself something. And it's not very difficult because, again, a lot of it may be conceptually you've had in a class, especially in high school, but you will just kind of have to teach yourself a little more. The good news is, is you could fail every single one of these, and as, a as an active duty military member, you're entitled to take each one of these once. You could fail every single one of these, and then still just go use TA to take the course. You do not have to go to any TA briefings. You don't have to go to class every day to take these. So these are a good option. But if this doesn't work out for you because you just it's not your thing, you just set this aside. And then you have to declare CCIF as your goal on the Air Force Virtual Education Center. And then you can take coursework for all of it. And like I said, the five general educations are all things that you probably need for a bachelor's anyway. So if you're working towards a bachelor's, you just take those courses as part of your bachelor's. And then you come back, you get the memo, and you send the credits to CCAF. When I got my bachelor's, there were a lot of people who finished their CCAF after they finished their bachelor's just by virtue of the order they took their classes in. So you don't have to dedicate and say specifically, I want my CCAF. You can already start working on your bachelor's and then just get this on the side too. So now, I don't do a PowerPoint. I don't have a lot of handouts because you get a lot of information and you just sort of bundle it and chuck it away. So the most important thing is remember who I am, remember the building I work in, come see me. That's what we're there for. I know a lot of people work shifts. I definitely am reachable via email. Um, it's especially because it is specific to your AFSC, a lot of times it's good to sit down and actually pull up your progress report and talk about any classes you previously took so we can talk about it. But I, I just don't do handouts because I don't want you guys to lose anything. I'd rather you guys just come talk to me again. So are there any questions? That's just kind of like the broadest basic, even though there were some details. Basic yeah, CLEP, CLEP and DSST are just different brands of essentially the same thing, test for credit. So, And it, honestly, when you, when you contact the National Test Center who runs the testing here on this base, if you don't know which is which, if you just tell them the title, they know which is which because that part isn't really important to you. Okay, question. That was, no. question. that was your exact question. Oh, so psychic. Okay. If yes. anyone is interested, you've probably seen, on the, seen it on the Air Force portal that they're advertising a cross, a cross cultural communi communication class online yes. through the Air Force uh, uh, Air University. That will count as your social science class. It does. And it also helps for some people who their tech schools were taught by non Air Force um, instructors. So, for example, um, PA, 
vehicle maintenance and um, explosive ordnance. They attend different branches, schools, and so they don't have enough residency credit, which most people do, and that's such a specific situation. I usually don't address it unless I know what career you're in. Um, but that counts as residency credit. So that's a really good way to get residency credit. And I mean, really, as a military member, it's a good course to take because it's you. All, it's all self based. Yeah. yeah. The, uh, there's two different ones. They offer one each quarter. So I did mine when I was in the desert. Yeah. They have like a cross cultural communications and intro to culture. Yeah. And the intro yeah. One. yeah. So they're both really good, you know. They're, they're free. Mm -hmm. If you fail one, it doesn't matter because I actually failed the end. Yeah, and you can still take it. It's not. You don't have to be wanting your CCF to take that. You can just take that to take that. Or if, um, if you already have your social science credit, because maybe you took a history class previously, it will count as a program elective. Because remember, program elective is just where you dump everything else. So, is there any other questions?